Once you know what your brand is, the game becomes getting it in front of as many people as possible so that you can attract more of the right people to your offers so that you can help and impact them. Imagine if you could create 160 pieces of content all in one day and then drip them out over time over all of the different platforms that you want to be on and be done for over five months of content. (laughs) This is exactly what our guest today did and do not worry, I dig into the tactics with her so that you can duplicate this in your own brand and in your own business. You're listening to The Brand Gravity Show. My name is Kay Putnam, psychology-driven brand strategist. My guest today is Maggie, who's a business and marketing strategist. She went from being a booked out coach with a team of seven, but basically not being able to live life and feeling really burnt out. Having an unpredictable chronic illness didn't help. She streamlined, simplified, and automated to grow her business to multiple six figures, including $124,000 a month just with one part-time team member. Maggie is based in Amsterdam with her husband, Michael, and their Aussie doodle pupster, Frodo. You can find her eating tacos, playing video games, or planning her next trip when she is not being a marketing genius. And I didn't even give Maggie a chance to warm up. We literally jumped straight into this conversation because we've been in each other's orbits for many years now. I actually had her as a guest expert in one of my challenge launches maybe about five or six years ago. So it was so great to catch up with her and I can't wait for you to learn from her genius. I've been using AI for a few months now. I used it to record 180 videos in one day. And then like last week in Nashville at my mastermind, I started talking about it. I realized, oh, people are like into this. And I actually know a lot more than I think I do. I put together Google doc and I've had like 200 people message me for it. So I'm running a clinic on it next week and, you know, running with this. I love it. What gave you the idea? What gave me the idea? So I've been thinking a lot this year, like, you know, things have changed in the market. People's buying tendencies, buying behavior has changed. People are becoming more sick more savvy or, you know, they want more information. They want more trust before they make a purchasing decision. So my thought process was really like, how can I build connection with my audience more? How can I have a lot more touch points? Because people now need 27 touch points before they make a buying decision or before they're ready to make a buying decision. So that doesn't even mean 27 touch points to buy from you. It's 27 touch points before they think about buying from you. (laughs) Nice, right? Mm Mm-hmm. How do I do that? How do I build an like trust factor? How to build my authority without using ads? Because yeah. you can do all of that, all of that with ads. But I was like, I don't want to. What else can I do? So I thought about what's something that is working right now. Because a lot of things that used to work five years ago don't work that well anymore. What's working right now that can kind of hit all these points? And the my answer to that was short form video. Short form video, you can put it on all these platforms. Mine are currently going across nine different platforms every single day. Holy cow. Hang on, let me pause you there. Okay. So I know, so there's Instagram Reels, there's TikTok, there's LinkedIn, YouTube Shorts. What am I missing? I'm just going to pull up my notes quickly. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to go straight into the conversation. I know, sorry. Okay. Like, you you explained here. it so beautifully when we first got started. It sounded so natural since we know each other. And I'm like, oh, let's just, let's just get started. <laughs> so we've got everything that you said, but you've got a few places on Facebook as well. Because you've got Facebook, you've got your business page. Your business page, your business page stories, your business page reels, and your personal profile if you're using, if you're more of a personal brand. So Mm. that's from Facebook, that's six places just on Facebook across two profiles. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Please continue. (laughs) Absolutely. So I, I was really looking at how do I have these touch points and how do I like really not just have touch points and like, oh, people like me, that's, that's great. and, And we all want to be liked, but how can I use this to drive sales? So I have a system on the back end that educates people that nurtures them and that helps them come to that buying decision. So Mm -hmm. my marketing sales process and the short form videos that I'll talk about a little bit more, like how you can turn that into written content as well. That content strategy is now driving visibility, authority, and traffic into my sales processes, which means I'm getting... Like just today, just before this call, I've had two like very, very qualified sales calls come in and have a conversation that came from 
these, this strategy that I have been running for less than two weeks. My Instagram reach on like last time I checked was three days ago. My Instagram reach is up 46% in 10 days. Dang, dang. Do you have a level that? <laughs> I have so many questions. I can't wait to dive into all of my <laughs> questions. Okay. First question. What's, so this is top of funnel, attention, grabbing, trust building. What is the call to action? Like what, what's the next step after somebody watches a short form I'm, video? I'm using a couple. So I'm testing things out. So I'm using yep. you know, comment below with X. If you want this resource, I'm setting up many chats to make this process automated as well. Nice. So you could say like, one thing I've done is I, I wrote a guide on how I did this process, 180 videos in one day. And I just said, if you want this guide, I'll send it to you comment 180 below and you'll get it. So some of those videos have that. Sometimes it's check link in bio. That's a big one. And in the link in my bio, that's where I have like either an automated webinar or like a short, a shorter mini webinar, like a video sales letter, which talks mm. about, oh, here's how to get more clients and grow and get more people to your group coaching programs on autopilot. And that's Amazing. the mechanism that converts them. So, so, and sometimes the other call to action I use is just follow, follow for more. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. I still have so many more questions, but before we dive into more of the nuts and bolts of how this has been working and how you set it up and use AI to do all of that, give us a quick description of your business. You've had incredible growth in the last couple of years mm -hmm. and yeah, just give people a taste of what's possible. Sure. So my name is Maggie. I'm a business and marketing strategist, AKA your business growth wizard. I, you know, two years ago, I was a booked out coach and strategist doing one-to-one -one work, trying to scale out of that, you know, growth income and impact ceiling through courses and through launches. And that was completely burning me out. Like I had a team of seven people, you know, my Slack was going on, going off all day with questions. It was a nightmare. And I was just trying to launch and grow. And I realized this, I built myself in the golden cage. My calendar is so full. I'm literally scheduling a coffee with a friend three weeks out. Like I am yeah. not okay with that. That being my day to day. Yeah. And I'll be clearly like gr growing and getting out that via delegation did not work because building my team, growing my team, like meant my profit margin was like non-existent. <laughs> you know, you have a million people to manage and I don't want to do that. So yeah. I made a bit of a drastic decision. I fired the team, let go of everyone basically overnight. With, with love and with, you know, yeah. referrals and so on. But I made that decision. I changed my business model out of pure one-to-one -one coaching and courses. Like two things. And one-to-one -one coaching, and I had done this like mastermind that was really unstructured, which was very pure coaching based. And then I had these very structured information-driven courses. And I realized the people in the mentorship mastermind space that was unstructured really needed information and structure. The people in the courses really needed coaching. So I put them together. This has turned into Evergreen Empire, which is my main program that I run now, which is, and it's in a one-to-many model, which allowed me so much time back and freedom. And, you know, not to kind of be like, oh, it's all unicorns farting rainbows all the time. It's definitely not. There's a lot of hard work and, you know, there's a lot of marketing that needs to happen and so on, but that's how I changed my business model. And within, when I was doing one-to-one, -one, I was doing like 10, 15 K a month. Mm -hmm. And when I made this change, I had a, within two months, three months, I had a $73,000 month, three months later, 124 K in sales by myself, no team. So I had got to the 124 K month without even assistant. And then the next year, you know, I hired my sister who's now my kind of ops manager, OBM. And last year we did a 340, just me and she had, she started midsummer last year. So yeah, 340 Amazing. just with, with us and yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Our our business journeys definitely echo each other's in so many ways. And I feel like this desire for simplification is something I'm hearing from a lot of people. It's like, okay, like I'm doing all of the things, I'm putting all of these resources into growth, into doing all of this. But clearly, or there must be a better way or there must be a simpler way. And I love that you found it and it's working as well as it is for you. That's absolutely incredible. Talk to me. So Filming 160 short form videos in one day. What role did AI play in getting set up for that? The full content strategy, the topics, the titles, and the scripts all came from AI. Dang. How did you get AI to speak in your brand voice or in a voice that felt natural to you to present? Yes. So I have a whole process I do and I teach on how to 
train what I now call bestie, ChatGPT, to understand your brand voice. Because, you know, people play around with ChatGPT and they go in and, or with different AI tools, and they go in with an outcome in mind and they go like, well, this is like totally generic. Yeah. If you put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. It's that simple. So there's a very specific process you have to do to to give the AI tool, let's say ChatGPT in this case, the right fodder it needs to give you the outcome you want. So I knew, okay, I have a bunch of topic ideas, but I need more because my my goal actually was to film 270 on that day. I only got to 180. (laughs) Darn it. (laughs) That was the initial goal. And I just, I was like, I ran out of time to do the scripting, even with AI. So I was like, you know what? Cool. I'm okay with 180 in one day. That's cool. (laughs) Let me pause you there for a second. What a great like mini case study for just setting a ridiculous goal because you ended up with this amazing result, even though it wasn't like quite as high as, as the ridiculous goal, but amazing. I love, I love that. It's just a good strategy for, for doing unreasonable things. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, the bane of my existence, my own ambition. <laughs> can you tell I have ADHD? Same, same girl. <laughs> Like we all, do. all right. So what, what types of things are you putting into AI to shape the output? So it's a bit of a longer process. I'm going to talk, let's, let's talk specifically first about brand voice. I think that makes, yeah. that's maybe a bit more interesting to this because we can go into different directions. Yeah. I have kind of two ways I use ChatGPT to get my brand voice and anyone can do this. So wait, basically you want to go into ChatGPT and you want to find written texts that you've posted, that you've written or transcripts of videos. I would actually recommend if you can go get transcripts of videos of you speaking. You don't mm-hmm. want to use interviews. You want videos where only you are speaking. So any like a Facebook live that you've done, download that video, stick it into something like Descript, yeah. get the transcription, and then copy that transcription into ChatGPT. And ChatGPT, ChatGPT I'm going to call it Bestie. It's like, it's such a mouthful to pronounce. Bestie. Yeah. <laughs> does have a character limit. So you might not be able to put in the entire transcript at once. You might have to do it in parts, but you can just say like, put you know, put in a prompt, like I'm going to give you input and I want you to help me analyze the brand voice of this text. If I want to create you to create content for me in this voice, analyze, you know, what is the brand voice? What's the tone of voice? What are any, anything specific, unique factors about this text that makes it, you know, a brand voice, something along those lines, you can play around with this. And then you start inputting the text. So you go, I'm going to give you more text. I'm going to give you more text. You can do that in parts and you can analyze that text. So it tells you. So I always get, you know, my copy is motivational. It's friendly. It's casual. I share personal stories. There's vulnerability. There's a lot of lessons learned. And I mean, you've, we know each other. So I think you've seen some of my marketing and I was like, that's, that's pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. That's very accurate. So yeah. get it to analyze your own written text, ideally transcripts of videos you've done like Facebook lives. The other thing you can do, you can kind of take that and then ask Bestie, if I wanted you to write a piece of content in this brand voice and you give it the input, what words should I use to describe this to you? So it's going to tell you like you want something that's you know analytical or thoughtful or enthusiastic, aspirational, whatever. Yeah. Then what you can do, is say what, this is like a trick I found that actually worked really well for me. Because I found, instead of always saying, use these words for the brand voice, I found there was one person, like one well-known person who has a very similar writing style, speaking style Mm. to me. Mark, I bet you can even ask Bestie to mm -hmm. tell you if there is somebody that's kind of similar to your writing style. So you can do that once you give it the input. And again, you really want to give it as much input as possible. Like this might take you 20 minutes, 30 minutes just to do this step. You want to give it as much information as possible. And then you can say, you know, what celebrity or author has a similar speaking writing style to this? Mm-hmm. I found for me, it's Marie Forleo. Yeah. Yeah. It's, she's very friendly, very casual, motivational. That is a lot of that same energy that I bring. So when I actually, so I cheated a little bit. I just said, here's information rewrite this in Marie Forleo's style of speaking. And then I'll add like some keywords as well, like to what I wanted specifically for me, like motivational, inspiring, whatever. And then I got output. I was just like, this is pretty accurate to how I would like actually say something. Yes. Yes. I did this exercise with one of my clients who was trying to find their brand voice using Vesti. And it's incredible about 
even just how well it works. So her brand voice was like very thoughtful, shares lots of like illustrating details and stories and really feels like this wise mentor to her clients. And Bestie told us all of that. And I'm like, yes, that is so you. It's exactly you. And she took her, the outputs that she was getting from Bestie previously, ran them through with that voice filter, that voice description. And suddenly all of her posts feel like her and are so much more on point than the generic output. It is such a valuable exercise. Thank you so much for walking us through how you did that. Talk to me a little bit about the content. So I imagine you use Bestie to help brainstorm topic ideas. Did you have to add to it? Did you have to direct that flow? How did you get good topics? Yeah. So I've mentioned I have ADHD and I love creating content and doing marketing, which means my notion doc on <laughs> content that's in draft. Or like, yeah. Phone notes. Yeah. In my case. My notes, yeah. There's a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot. So I knew initially already that I, I wanted to hit on a few different topic categories. You can use Bestie to do this yourself. I, I'm just a natural marketer. So I knew already I want to hit, you know, ADHD and lifestyle. I want to hit mindset. I want to hit, that's for the, like the no like trust factor. Yeah. Then I want to have the less aware content and the more aware content. So I wanted topics that were for people who are maybe less aware of what I actually do and they need a little bit more, more nurture. In my case, it was topics around visibility, marketing, and sales. Mm-hmm. That was for less aware and for more aware people who already knew like they needed someone like me, then they want systems and they want leveraged offers. So like, let me talk to you about group coaching. Let me talk to you about systems, automations, all that stuff. So I, I just started breaking things down. And again, you have like a training process you need to go through to give Bessie the right input about your ideal clients. Mm -hmm. Cause if you just say like, and people, I'm sure people have tried this, like give me 20 social media posts for online coaches. It's not going to be great you're not going to have great output because you've not given a great, great input. And a lot of people like, you know, just the training process, I probably spent like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, just testing things to make sure I got it to a point where I was happy with the output I was getting. So every time it's still experimental, like, again, I have this process, but you still have to experiment to figure out what works for you. You get output and you think about, do I like it? Do I not? What do I like about it? What don't I like? Mm-hmm. And I could be like, And then you can just say, hey, bestie, I'm going to pause for a second, actually. Here's what I would suggest, because this is what I do as well. When you start working with ChatGPT, give it a name and a role. So you literally say, hey, ChatGPT, you are now known as bestie, the world's best social media marketer. Here's the input or here's the output I need. And here's another trick you can do when you're getting generic results back. You can also say, hey, bestie, this is too generic. What input do you need from me to make this more specific to what I need? And it's literally going to give you like questions, you know, who's your ideal client? What problems are they struggling with? What case success stories do you have to share? What's your USP, your unique style proposition? And then you can give it more input, which you can copy paste from your website, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, make it easier. Mm -hmm. Yes. One of the exercises I have a lot of my students do is what I call 3D messaging. It's what are your ideal person's desires, devils, aka pain points, and then doubts or limiting beliefs, misconceptions. If you've ever done an exercise like that to inform your copywriting, this is like gold dust. You just like give it to Bestie, ChatGPT. And it's one of those things that has a dramatic impact on making it more specific to your people, your brand. So it actually resonates and it's not just this generic filler content that you can be at risk of creating if you don't have some of those, that raw data for it to work with. So love it. So if you were to do this exercise again, would you change anything? Yes, I would. My initial kind of content creation process, the video scripts that I got that in the brand voice, that was very automated with AI, but the content strategy process itself and the topics were quite manual. Yeah. And what I found since then is if I give Bestie the right input of my clients, what I can do is say, what are, you know, 27 problems that they have? I get the problems. I just double check to make sure, okay, cool. I agree as, you know, expert on my active clients, I agree with this output. Great. Give me 10 solutions per problem. And guess what? You've got 270 topics. I love it. So you said you've been publishing the videos for the last two weeks. You're already seeing results what kinds of results are you seeing? What's what's the data that's coming in? What are you paying attention to? 
So yeah, Instagram reach is up 46%, which is great. And we're not really doing too much with like hashtags or anything. Just honestly, this was like a fairly big project just with publishing and like writing the captions for videos. So I'm like, cool, let's just, yes, it could be better, but that's fine. We'll work on it as we work on it and improve because there's so many videos. It's not such a big deal if like one doesn't have the right hashtags. Mm -hmm. I, my mother has told me she can no longer open Instagram without seeing me. (laughs) Winning. (laughs) Great. She was like, can you like stop? I'm like, okay, well, (laughs) sorry. And I've I've just gotten like a lot of messages from people like, oh my gosh, I'm seeing you everywhere. So there's people who are interacting, like on, even like on LinkedIn, for example, I was a little hesitant to think about, you know, should we use the same strategy of daily videos on LinkedIn when LinkedIn's algorithm doesn't really work that way. It works better with engagement. And obviously, you know, that would require me engaging for like 30 to 60 minutes a day to get Mm -hmm. the right reach. But actually, it's been going really well on LinkedIn as well. I'm not sure the exact number right now, but my my reach is up despite each individual video post having less of reach than like maybe more well thought out posts that I would do with engagement on LinkedIn. But my Mm -hmm. overall reach is up by quite a bit. Wow, that's amazing. So, And like I said, just today, I've had two very qualified sales calls come in from seeing my videos. Yeah, yeah. I love it. What was the actual shooting process like? Just to give people a little taste there. Did you rent a studio space? Did you do it? What What was the setup? So to, just a caveat before we go in, I would do it differently if I did it again. Really? I will be doing it again. I will be taking a much more casual approach. With this one, I had a videographer and I had like, um, like someone helping me with like the lights and everything. So we set up a camera. I just shot it at home. We had like two, three kind of places that we found that looked nice. We had the lights, we had the camera. I was mic'd up. So that was quite simple. If I would do it again, I would just do it on my laptop. I would just do it on like on my phone or on, yeah. you know, like v.com is, or v.com or .io is a great a video editing and video recording tool. I will be doing this again. I will be doing it in a simpler way. It's just going to make life easier. And I've also found like the videos I have now, and if anyone wants to see them, like go to my Instagram, Maggie Gila. They're quite polished. Like I, I look very cute. You know, you have like really nice background. You can tell that they're like well done. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm almost thinking like, does that help with the goal that I have or does that detract from it? Yeah, I've struggled with that myself because I feel like there has to be some brand benefit because not everybody can have high production value content. So you naturally stand out, but there's that human psychology element that really prefers authenticity and imperfect content. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm right with you. I, I go back and forth on. Yeah. yeah so on I mean, course. what I'm doing to solve that now is I'm making sure the photos and the images I'm posting in between those videos are like selfies of yes. me and makeup. <laughs> or I'm doing more Instagram stories. There's like walking down the street doing, I've been doing like Facebook lives, like get ready with me. Just like, I want to make sure I'm not losing that human touch. Cause you also don't want to almost like allow other people to put you on a pedestal. Mm-hmm. They see something that feels really intimidating. Cause now I can say like, listen, if we get your content strategy, we get your scripts ready. You sitting down and recording 180 videos in a day, or even like 90 or whatever. It's not that big a deal. Yeah. Like it's, my actual filming process, you know, video was set up, lighting was set up. You know, I had a couple of outfits that I changed into, but then we just had an iPad with a teleprompter mm-hmm. and all my scripts went on that iPad and I would just read out what was written on that, on that iPad. Yeah. So it was right, right below my camera, right below camera. So it looks like I'm looking into it. And yeah. that's, that's how I was able to film that many in a day with, with that scripting process, even though. I would prefer not having a full script. I prefer things like this, you know, just talking and being a bit more casual and mm-hmm. less structured. But with short form videos, I found out very, very quickly, if I have 30 seconds to share something, like you've seen how much I talk here, right? <laughs> like this yes. needs to be scripted or it doesn't happen. But here's like a really, really cool thing. I just realized I was at my own like seven figure mastermind in Nashville last week. I can now use Bestie to take my short form video scripts. And guess what? I can turn them into long form YouTube video scripts. No kidding. Tell me more. It's kind of scary how simple this is. Like, I feel like I should be like, oh no, okay, I can't tell you because it's super <laughs> just, complicated. Yeah. You should pay me. I just was testing this out like when I was there because Kim Garst gave me this tip. So yeah, like she's amazing in content strategy and everything. Yeah. So I just took my script, I took it to my TikTok script and I said, here's like a short form video script, Bestie. Help me turn this into a three to five minute video or a five minute video for YouTube. Mm-hmm. I want a hook, you know, yeah. three to five points. 
and a call to action to, you know, book a game plan call with me or to get my free lead magnet on mm-hmm. my, you know, 50K a month ca- coaching case study or whatever. Yeah. And I go out, but I was just like, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Okay. <laughs> wow. This is, wow. This is going to be a lot easier than I thought it would be. Oh my gosh. I love this so much because it's helping us create more content, more connections, have more impact with people, but it still requires this human element of talking to a camera, showing up, being in your energy, having the expertise and the raw data that you're feeding it so that it's not just generic. I feel like, I don't know, it feels like a cheat code in some ways, but also it's just, I'm so thankful that I'm able to leverage like all of this content that I've been creating, all of these videos that I've created in the past to generate new pieces of content easier than ever before. It's absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that in great detail. What would be your action item? So if somebody has been watching, listening, they love this idea, what would you advise them to do first? Go get my free guide on this because that yeah. walks you through the process. And like there's there's more involved. Like I'm going, you know, I'm trying to give as much information as I can, but it is a longer process yeah. to get all this done. I would just be experimenting. Like really think about when you approach, like let's say chat GPT, think about what is the ideal outcome you want from it. Like you have yeah. to go there knowing what you want. Otherwise, it's really you're gonna hate everything and you're not mm-hmm. gonna know why you hate it, which means you're not gonna be able to tell Chat GPT what you want it to do differently for you. So I knew I was like, I want to do these videos for, around these topics. I want to showcase my expertise. I want to have make sure I have, you know, connection content, less aware, more aware content. And let's run with that. So yeah, I think once you can figure out how to get your own brand voice and you understand how you want to show up and how you want to be perceived, it makes this process a lot easier. But I'm going to blow your mind with one more thing, Kay. All these scripts that I have. So one, I'm turning them to long form YouTube content. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to start shooting that. And again, just going to shoot that on my laptop camera and keep things simple and run with it. But yeah. two, there's also a really easy way you can turn them into Instagram graphics and carousels. Yes. So yes. with this one thing that I did with 180 videos, I realized last week, like, oh my God, this is literally the next 12 months worth of short, long form content, short form content graphics, everything like that's it. Yeah. And it's obviously the recording part is not automated. The video editing part is also not automated. Although there are some AI tools coming up now that are getting better at video editing. Yep. Opus clip is one of them, but this is also with like the rise of AI and content. There is now a huge influx of very like B rated B minus rated written content online. Mm Mm-hmm video is still really hard to fake. Yes. It's still a secret weapon. It's still um, a secret weapon. So this is like one of the best ways to really grow your authority, to, mm-hmm. to share your personal brand. And it, you don't have to, you don't, you don't have to do 180 in a day. Yeah. You really don't. That's me because I go all in or nothing. Like you know. you're bananas. <laughs> but yeah. yeah I, I've done a couple sessions where I've done like 20, 20 in a day. Mm-hmm. And that only takes maybe like two hours, hour and a half or so once you have the scripts. So it becomes this like beautiful batch of content that you can then drip out over time and you're not chained to social media as much anymore. So I realized I had this like trip into Nashville where I was running my mastermind event with my clients who flew to see me plus three full days with my seven figure mastermind that I'm part of. And I realized, Ooh, I have like daily content, video content going out every day. And then that's it. I'm done. Love it. Mic drop. Mic drop, Maggie. Thank you so much for sharing all this. We will link to you below. Is Instagram the like your top platform? If people want to just pick one place to find yeah, you first. Instagram's fine. Yeah. I use Facebook a lot. Instagram's fine too. Okay. Uh, both. Come say hi. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad that we got to catch up. Thank you so much for being on the Brand Gravity Show. I appreciate you endlessly. And I think you're a freaking genius. So keep, Thank you. keep being amazing. <laughs> Thank you. This is so much fun. So what do you think? Do you think that you could rock out 160 pieces of content for your brand in a single day? Or maybe just 50 or 60? Can you imagine how much that would change in terms of what you had to put your energy into each day? You would have the peace of mind knowing that you are consistently being visible in your brand and continually putting out small little micro bits of content that each have an opportunity to attract more of your ideal 
perfect fit clients to your brand. Check out the links below, or if you're listening on just the audio version of this podcast, you can head out you can head over to kputnam.com slash podcast and grab all of the resources that we mentioned over there. Thank you so much for listening or watching. No matter what you're doing, I appreciate you. And I hope you take this episode and put it into action in your own way.